New tonight, indictments related to alleged COVID relief fraud. That was part of the news that Alaska's U.S. attorney released late this afternoon. The feds say they are all related to an overall series of white-collar crimes. Warren Maxwell of Alaska's News Source Investigates learning these task force members say there are millions of dollars in COVID relief fraud to be found in the state. Warren? Well, Mike, the Small Business Administration is in charge of much of this COVID relief money, and their own report calls the level of fraud unprecedented. That's just the cases that they know about. The five cases highlighted by the U.S. Attorney's Office range from an Anchorage woman they say received $1 million in relief funds, in part by claiming employees she didn't have, to an Anchorage businessman who got COVID funds but allegedly failed to mention criminal convictions, making him ineligible. Examples Small Business Administration's investigators say point to how nationally the amount of potential fraud is staggering. We estimate that SBA distributed over 200 billion, with a B, in potentially fraudulent COVID idols, targeted loan advances, supplemental target advances, and PPP loans. Here in Alaska, a special task force led by the U.S. Attorney Lane Tucker is taking aim at COVID fraud. Just in the past few months, we've had, I think, three indictments in Anchorage, uh, totaling almost $3 million in COVID-19 fraud. One example the indictment says is 36-year-old Cheryl Labrie, listed as Liberty Tax Service owner. She's charged with fraudulently obtaining and laundering roughly a million dollars in COVID relief funds. Among other things, the government says she used the money to facilitate the purchase of a new home and pay for a marijuana dispensary's payroll expenses. But COVID is not the only type of fraud the U.S. Attorney's Office is focused on. Tucker says overall, they're working to recover all kinds of white-collar crime money. In Alaska, in 2023 alone, in grant and contract fraud, the state was allocated over $10 billion in federal funds. If the 20% number is accurate, that's $2 billion in fraud. Healthcare fraud, same thing. Billions and billions, over $100 billion a year nationally. Uh, and, you know, Alaska has its share of that, and we're looking for it and aggressively prosecuting it. The FBI is also part of the task force. An agent says white-collar crime can impact anyone, sometimes with devastating consequences. It can ruin businesses. It can uh, deplete your life savings. It can all different types of things, and that's where it's not... White collar crime is not victimless because of that. He says even things like government relief programs ultimately are funded from taxpayers' pockets. Like the COVID-19 fraud, that's, that's taxpayer dollars that paid for that. And so, in essence, every taxpayer is a victim in that sense, right? Because they're the ones that are going to have to pay to make up all that fraud. And perhaps not surprisingly, investigators say that most of these cases come to light because of tips that they receive from the public. There are a number of ways to report white-collar crime, and you can see that list right now on alaskasnewsource.com. Also, we reached out to Cheryl Labrie, the woman we mentioned in our story, who was charged with nearly a million dollars in COVID fraud. She had no comment. Lauren Maxwell, Alaska's News Source.